Equations that are quadratic in nature will take on this form. a u squared plus b u plus c is equal to zero. These are guys that are not necessarily quadratic, but they have a nature, they have a form uh, that makes them look quadratic. For example, if I ask you to solve this, if I take this equation, x to the fourth minus 4x squared minus 45 is equal to 0. This guy is not quadratic, but it's quadratic in nature, which means we can use quadratic methods to solve this guy. And here's how you know something is quadratic in nature. You've got a constant here at the end, and this little guy right here kind of matches up with your u that you see. But if this is to be quadratic in nature, then you need to have double his exponent here at the, uh, at the front. And there's x to the fourth. So if this guy is my u, u squared then is x to the fourth. And you can see that here. If I were to write this, this is x squared squared. Now, I could do a u substitution here. That's something we're going to see in the next few videos. But I don't need to do that here because this is something that's easy enough for us to tackle without making it more complicated. This is a nice polynomial uh, equation. So I'm just going to factor this guy. If I had something that was x squared, we would try to factor that guy by breaking down the x squared evenly to be x and x. However, since I have x to the fourth, I want to break this guy down evenly, and so I will use x squared and x squared. Now, that's not the only way to break down x to the fourth. You could use x to the third times x, but you have to make sure that what you get here on the inside and the outside, whenever you are foiling, these guys must both be x squared terms to combine and get x squared in the middle. So that's why I want to split this up evenly with x squared and x squared. Now to find numbers that multiply to give you negative 45 and add to give you negative 4, well that's just minus 9 and plus 5. So really, you're just factoring this like you've done before, but now things are a little more complicated given the type of equation that we have. So you see here, I get negative 9x squared, positive 5x squared, and there's my negative 4 when it's all said and done. x squared minus 9 does factor as the difference of squares, but I'm not going to show that right now. What I do want to show is how we finish this guy using not only the zero factor theorem, but also the square root property. See, if I write x squared minus 9 equals 0, you know that I can solve this guy using the square root property because this is the only x that I have, and he's got the square. The other solutions I'm going to have come from setting this other factor, x squared plus 5 equal to 0. So we're going to take these guys one at a time and see what happens. Over here, if I isolate the square, I get x squared is equal to 9. Then using the square root property, we take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. And I have that x is equal to plus or minus 3. Well, keep in mind that this guy was x to the fourth, so I expect four solutions. This only gives me two. When I finish this guy by using the square root property, x squared is equal to negative 5. And then I take the square root of both sides, plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus. What's going to happen with negative 5? It's not going to be i5 or 5i, but the i does come outside of the radical, but since 5 is not a square, he has to stay inside. So all the answers that we have right here, these guys are perfectly acceptable. Now the question is, would you see all of these guys if you were to graph? And the answer is no, because when you graph, you're graphing using real numbers. So you would only see these two solutions and not these two. But that doesn't mean that we can't check these. Now, if you're doing this in my math lab, you have to make sure you do type your answers in correctly. And they will want you to use the set builder notation, where you just list your solutions 3, 
negative 3 i squared is 5. Now, when you do your comma to separate these, make sure that you do make sure that your cursor is outside of the radical. If you sneak the comma inside the radical, my math lab will treat that as a wrong answer. Now, let's go to the graphing calculator so you can see what this guy looks like. Okay. Let's come back here to my original equation. If I type in x to the fourth, minus 4x squared minus 45. When I graph this guy, I want to know where does this guy equal 0. That means where does it cross the x-axis. And you see that it crosses once and twice. And those values that it crosses correspond to the negative 3 and the positive 3 that we found. Those are our only real solutions here, plus or minus 3. To check the other ones, we can quit out of this. And we can use that store feature of the calculator. If I say i square roots of 5, make sure you close off the parentheses for the square root. Store that into x. And as we were doing the other day, we're going to press alpha decimal to bring up the colon. Remember, the colon will separate commands in the, uh, in the line that we're typing into the calculator. So the other command that I want to type in is x to the fourth minus 4x squared minus 45. Now when I type this in, if I'm saying this is a solution to my original equation, and this guy was supposed to be equal to 0, I should get 0, and I do. If I want to check negative i squared to 5, if I do second entry, I don't have to type in everything. It just brings, up, brings back the last thing that I typed in. So when I insert in front of this guy a negative, because that's what I'm trying to check. If I plug in negative i, does that work out? Or negative i squared to 5, and I still get 0. So all of my answers have been verified.